I'm here and I come here every Friday to save your life. I'm here to be able to save 3,000 kids' lives. And that is better than anything I have ever done in my whole entire life. She was every parent's dream. You could not have asked for a better child. It was her first time out. She was on her first date. And Straight A's. Uh, she graduated in white. She worked very hard all of her life to achieve that. You know, the guy that was driving the car just kind of lost control, crashed into a tree. Uh, when the assistant manager called me, um, told me that Mikey had been in a car accident and that he was that he was killed and that he was with a teenage girl that was the daughter of somebody that he worked with and I was the only one at that particular store that had a teenage daughter that age so we pretty much knew it was her. A march is planned today at Loyola Marymount College after more racist graffiti turns up on campus. Some students at Loyola Marymount University speaking out today against recent acts of racism. Students at Loyola Marymount University say there have been several incidents in the past three weeks where racial slurs have been written on walls. Lack of communication between the administration and faculty and students. You have to get people talking about what the reality of the situation on campus is and to embrace that reality, whether it's awful. I mean, if there's an awful reality of the way people are treated and the way that there's racism and sexism and ageism here, which there is in the world, you can't just ignore that and pretend that we're up on this bluff in this little bubble that doesn't experience any of those things. Her slave name was Bridget, but everyone called her Biddy. She was to become the first black female landowner in early Los Angeles, California. Who was Biddy Mason? And how did she go from being someone's property to owning property? Biddy Mason was born into slavery in August in the year of 1818 in the South. Like most slaves, her parents are unknown. We first hear about Biddy Mason at the age of 18 when she was given to Rebecca and Robert Smith as a wedding gift. Imagine um, to the ridiculousness of being born into slavery and then being a person given as a wedding gift. How is it possible to give someone away as a wedding gift? Robert and Rebecca Smith had six children together. And Biddy, in all, probably delivered these children and provided nursing care for the fragile Rebecca. In the years that followed, Biddy gave birth to her own three daughters, Ellen, Anne, and Harriet. I think her legacy is that you just can't give up. She didn't come out here looking for gold, you know. 
She didn't say, oh, if I get to California, I'm going to strike gold. I think she knew that was going to be a better place for her and her family. But there was no guarantee. But she was very much like my mother. Um, my mother didn't get out in the spotlight, but she gave me, and I'm a lot like her, and I'm glad I am, that you just do it. You just keep doing it. And pretty soon, you see the results of your labors. And I think that's what I've learned from Biddy Mason. So she's one more thing in the wheel of history. She's a, she's a spoke in the wheel of history. You can't pull that spoke out and, and expect the wheel to stay together. She's part of that. So we should know this. It's real important that we know what our history is. Betty Mason's legacy is she was number one in several areas. Uh, number one, to establish an African Methodist Episcopal Church in Southern California. Mm, number one, to be a wealthy entrepreneur who helps the helpless. Number one, to be a leader protesting uh, segregation and slavery.